Good afternoon. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. I have 12 noon on Wednesday. You know what time it is. It's time for our Wednesday noonday worship experience. I want to thank all of you all for joining us this afternoon. I want you to hit like and share. I want you to hit like and share. Bring other people in so they can be a part of our noonday worship experience. We are thankful to God for you joining us on this afternoon and hope and pray that God continues to bless you and keep you during these COVID-19 times that we're living in. Amen. Just want to do a simple praise song. Amen. And I want you to join in with me at home. Praise Him. Oh, praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him.
God praise. Yes, yes, yes. In spite of everything. Yes, yes. Because yes. God is still worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, and we hallelujah. Thank you, praise thank God, you, God, for you joining us on today. I want to prepare now to pray, and after which I will give the scripture for the afternoon. I'll have a brief couple of announcements and events uh, to announce, and then we have the sermonic selection, and then I'll come back with the word. Amen. That's all right with y'all. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come this afternoon saying thank you. Thank you, God, for allowing us to see another Wednesday noonday worship, Lord God, to be in the presence of the Lord in our various homes and destinations, Lord, wherever we are, Lord God, we know that you are there as well. So God, I ask that you would bless us now, that you would keep us, preserve us in this time, Lord. And then I pray, Lord God, for all of those who may be watching who are in need of encouragement. I pray, Lord God, that what we do here today would encourage somebody to know that you still reign and that you still rule and that you're still on the throne. Lord, help somebody understand, Lord Jesus, that whatever it is they need, whatever it is they desire, whatever, Lord God, they're looking to get from you, they can get it, Lord God. Because the Bible tells us that if any man or woman lacks wisdom or lacks anything, they can ask it of God, and Lord, you'll be there to supply what they need according to your riches and glory. So God, continue to bless your children. And bless us now, God, as we come before you as humble as we know how. And as we settle ourselves, Lord God, in the midst of this worship service. I also want to pray, Lord God, for all who are bereaved. A lot of people are bereaved, Lord Jesus. A lot of people have gone on to be with you, Lord Jesus. And so hearts are heavy, Lord God. People are thinking about loved ones who have gone on. And people are praying for loved ones who are sick, Lord Jesus. And so, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would give them what they stand in need of for those that are bereaved and continue to surround those, Lord God, who are sick, Lord God. And we know that you're a prayer answering God. And in any way you see fit, Lord Jesus, that you can move in somebody's life right now. Yes, God. God, we thank you. We love you. We adore you. We bless you. We honor you. And we thank you, Lord God, even now for yes. this worship experience. It's in Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen, Amen and thank God. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for praying with me. And I pray that the prayers touch hearts and minds and spirits of those that are here today. I want to read the scripture for which we will be uh, coming together to minister. It's coming from the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 14. Joshua chapter 14 and in your own personal private time with God, I wish you would read uh, the entire 14th chapter of Joshua. We're going to hone in on verses 6 through 12. Verses 6 through 12. Here begins the reading of God's word. Joshua chapter 14, beginning at verse 6, all the way down to verse 12. And I'm reading from the NIV version of the Bible. Now the people of Judah approached Joshua at Gilgal. And Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the, Kins the Kinsite, said to him, You know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God at Kadesh Barnea, about you and me. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land. And I brought him back a report according to my conviction. But my fellow Israelites, who went up with me, made the hearts of the people melt in fear. However, I followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. So on that day, Moses swore to me, the land on which your feet have walked will be your inheritance, and that, your, and that of your children forever, because you have followed the Lord my God, wholeheartedly. Now then, just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for 45 years since the time that he said this to Moses, while Israel moved about in the wilderness. So here I am today, 85 years old, 
and I'm still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. And I'm just as vigorous to go out to battle now as I was then. Now, give me this hill country that the Lord, that the Lord promised me that day. You yourself heard, you yourself heard uh, then, I'm sorry, you yourself heard then that the Anakites were there and their cities were large and fortified. But the Lord helping me, I will drive them out just as he said. The word of God, the people of God, thanks be to God. Amen. We're going to get into this in just a minute. It's good word, good word. Uh, just a few announcements and things I, I want you all to be uh, privy to. One, we want to continue to pray for all of our bereaved families at First Baptist. Uh, please pray uh, and continue to pray for all of our bereaved families. We want to lift up uh, Sister Darlene Curry uh, in the passing of her husband, Paul Curry. And we also want to lift up Mother Ada Parker and also Brother Frank Curry in the loss of their sibling. Amen. Please continue to send prayers to the entire Curry family during their time of bereavement. Uh, and please ask God to comfort them during this time. We also send up prayers for our own sister Marcia Jackson and the loss of her father, uh, Brother David Wright, Jr. Uh, we ask special prayers for the entire Jackson and Wright family uh, in the time of uh, Sister Marcia Jackson's father passing. And I always say it's their day today, could be your day tomorrow. But the Bible is very clear in days in which we're supposed to celebrate one another and joy, we ought to do that but also in days in which there is weeping and mourning and the need for comfort, we are to surround one another and comfort each other uh, in times of need. So please, man, please, sir, remember all of our bereaved families uh, and, and continue to pray for them. I do want to give uh, First Baptist the results of the Children's Church survey uh, that went out about a week ago. Uh, the results are in. And Children's Church will be on Sundays at 10 a.m. beginning this coming Sunday. Uh, so again, uh, I wanted to poll the parents of the church and you all responded. I also have read the comments that you all have added and we're looking to work to try to incorporate some of the things that you all want to see. Uh, while we're dealing with these challenging corona virus times, we want to make sure that each segment of our church uh, is blessed and addressed in a way in which it will be beneficial not only to our adults and our seniors, but to our youth as well. And so Children's Church will begin uh, anew. Amen. We had it before, but it was on a, another day. But the, it's overwhelming to come back that you all want it on Sundays, and it will be at 10 a.m. on Sunday. So look for Children's Church uh, to begin on this coming Sunday at 10 a.m. I also want to remind everyone that Bible study, Zoom Bible study, is tonight at 7 o'clock. We are excited. Uh, we have moved on from the book of Nehemiah. and We've also studied the book of Ezra, but you can't study the book of Ezra and Nehemiah without including the book of Esther. Uh, Nehemiah is traditionally the last book of history in the Old Testament. Uh, but Esther has something to say. And in those 10 chapters, we're going to do an exhaustive study on the entire book of Ezra, I mean, uh, Esther. So I'm asking all of you all to join us, Zoom Bible study, tonight at 7 o'clock, as we begin the study on the book of Esther. Also, I want you all, encourage you all to please like and share this broadcast and others that we have on Facebook. I'm asking all of you all also, if you are not a YouTube subscriber to First Baptist Church of Guilford, I want you to go to YouTube. Just type in First Baptist Church of Guilford. That's all you got to do. 
and it will bring up First Baptist Church of Guilford, Columbia, Maryland, and then their goal on our icon. You all know our, our symbol, amen, our symbol. Just click on the symbol and subscribe. I believe we have over 200 subscribers now. Uh, we want to widen that scope and get more. I'm asking all of you all to tell your neighbor, tell your friends to like us on Facebook and also to like us on our YouTube channel. Uh, YouTube gives us a lot of permissions and things that we can do the more subscribers we have. So we're thankful for those that have subscribed, but we're asking for more subscribers to subscribe, amen, to our YouTube channel. Also, I'm excited to share with you uh, and want you to pass the word uh, that on Sunday afternoons, uh, we, have, we are connected with WBGR Gospel Network, uh, which showcases our broadcast on Sundays at 4 p.m. from 4 to 5. Uh, you can go to WBGR Gospel Network on Facebook in order to see special rewind services of First Baptist Church of Guilford. Or you can go to Roku TV, Amazon Fire Stick TV, and soon Apple TV to get one of the services. And so we're widening the scope and our reach in this digital age of ministry. And we want you all to uh, get the word out about our presence on these various mediums so that the word of God can go forth and the ministry of God can be showcased. And so we thank you in advance for that. Amen. Again, classic services will be uh, on WBGR Gospel Network. You'll see old services uh, from the past. All kinds of good things are coming with WBGR. And so we want you all to please, man, please, sir, uh, to subscribe. And again, I just want to finally say that we want you all to stay safe. Uh, we have heard uh, the fact that uh, Governor Hogan may be opening up the state sometime in June. But as I share in meetings that I've had with our leadership, and I want to share with you, First Baptist, we're going to err on the side of caution. And we're going to make sure that each and every person is safe and we're going to stage our reopening, amen, our regathering, really, we, because the reality is we were never closed. We're going to stage our regathering back together. You'll hear more about that. This concludes the announcements uh, and events of interest for those listening on today. We ask that you will govern yourselves accordingly. This time, I'm going to ask my beautiful wife to come and share a sermonic selection. And I'll be back with the word for the afternoon. Amen and praise the Lord, everybody. Um, one announcement I'd like to add is that if you are in need of a face mask, the women's ministry has face masks to distribute to you. If you could send us an email at womensministry at fbcog.org. We will set up arrangements for you to get them. Thank you so much. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He
and because you've done all the things that you needed to do, you are now ready to go forth. And so it's graduation season, which means a lot of you have made significant accomplishments in your life to do something great, to do something awesome. And graduation, beloved, is only a part of the journey. Graduation is only the stepping stone of accomplishment that yields you and leads you toward getting to where you need to be. Because once you graduate from high school, then the next step is for some to go to college or for some to go to a trade school or for some to begin their path toward their career. And so you start making stepping stone after stepping stone and moving accomplishment after accomplishment. But what I want to tell you today is that when you have accomplished something as significant as a graduation, when you've accomplished something so wonderful as graduating in the class of 2020, I believe this now that because of your accomplishment, God's going to accelerate you to your destiny. God's going to accelerate you to your destiny. You see, beloved, we, 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 we've got to not rest on our laurels. I know, you know, graduation is great, but now is the time to seize the day. Carpe diem, amen, to, to seize the moment, take the time to go forth and get what God wants you to have. Yeah. See, we, 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 some of you have, have just got to go and get it, go get it, you've got to go get it. God has given you the fact, the place where you've made a significant accomplishment, now he's going to accelerate you toward that accomplishment and now you got to go get it. And, and this is for everybody. Mm -hmm. Whether or not you're just graduating from high school or college or postgraduate, mm -hmm. or even those babies, amen, that are coming out of elementary and preschool into school, wherever your stage or age is in life, God wants you to continue to make moves and to continue to make accomplishments that help to accelerate you to where God wants you to be. You've All got right. to go get it. So whether you're just getting started or whether you're on your way to fulfillment towards your destiny, you got to go get it. That's right. you got to go get it. Let me just say this. I've also, every Sunday, some of you, you know, I'm a sports fan, and every Sunday I try to watch what's called The Last Dance mm -hmm. on ESPN. It talks about Michael Jordan's journey through the six championships and the like. And one of the features of The Last Dance that I, I think is so significant is that it talks about Phil Jackson, who is the coach of the Chicago Bulls at the time. And Phil Jackson won 11 championships, mm -hmm. six with the Chicago Bulls, five with the Los Angeles Lakers, and a lot of people forget that he won a championship with the New York Knickerbockers as a player. And so Phil Jackson is very accomplished. And what Phil Jackson would tell people on Chicago Bulls team is that uh, he would come in and stop practice. And he did this with the Lakers as well. He would come in and stop practice, and he would have them lay down on the floor and look up in the rafters. Look up in the rafters to see the championships that hang above. Wow. And Phil would then turn off the lights after they had looked at the championship uh, banners that are hanging in the rafters. He would turn off the lights and, and put them in complete darkness. And then Phil Jackson, the coach of the Chicago Bulls and Los Angeles Lakers at the time, would say, see yourself winning another championship. Okay. See yourself winning the games necessary to help you to win the games in the playoffs yeah. necessary right. in order for you to accomplish the championship, to get yourself a chip. Amen. You, you, you've got to see yourself there because the thing is, you'll never get there until you visualize yeah, yeah. it yourself. You've got to visualize it in order to achieve it. You've got to see it before things. you achieve it. You've got to see it before you can realize it because, listen, if you don't see it, before you realize it, then, then you won't get any previews of yeah. coming attractions. 
You won't get any previews. And remember, y'all, when we used to go to the movies, amen, when we used to go to the movies, we used to see these previews of coming attractions that would attract us to wait with bated breath for the next major blockbuster movie on now. that was coming out. Here's the point. You've got to visualize it in order to realize it. That's right. That's the first major move of this message. And I want you to understand, if you're going to go get it, you've got to visualize it before you can realize it. Yeah, yeah. In our text, it's been now some years where they have now come into the land of promise. And Joshua is dividing the land. Uh, and it's determined already by Moses in the book of Numbers uh, that each tribe would get their specific apportionment of land. And so everybody knew what place they were supposed to get mm -hmm. and what they were going to receive. And so Joshua is dividing the land and it's been determined by Moses who would get the land. But here in our text, one Caleb mm -hmm. comes to remind Joshua about what Moses said. Come on. And when he reminds Joshua about what Moses said, he turns around, looks at the land well, that he's supposed to have, and said, give me this mountain. That, that's the King James Version. Uh, the NIV Version says, give me this hill country. Uh -huh. Because when you see it, when you visualize it, when you visualize it, that's when you can achieve. When you have the vision for it, that's when you can achieve. And here it is. It says, Hebron is what I'm supposed to have. See, here's the thing. If God shows you that you're supposed to receive something, mm -hmm. then you need to start making tracks to the place where God says you're supposed to have it. Uh, Bishop T.D. Jake says this, that your passion is what gives you permission to possess it. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to say that again. Mm -hmm. Bishop T.D. Jake, I'm going to give him credit because he said it, says your passion is God's permission mm. for you to possess it. Well, In other words, if you've got the passion, if you've got the poise, if you've got the power within yourself to start to pursue the things of God, your passion gives you permission mm. to go ahead and possess it. Come on now. But you've got to visualize it before you can achieve it. Well, See, see you, you have to be able to see it before you see it. That's right. Or you never will see Come it. Come on. You, you've got to be able to see it before you get it in order to get it. I hope y'all are getting this. You've got to be able to see it. Like Phil Jackson did the play. Close your eyes and already imagine that you have it in your possession. And open your eyes and make tracks to yeah, try yeah, yeah. to get it. Come on now. Say it, say it, say it. Well, I don't know the basketball analogies there. There's this one basketball player that I love, and, and when his nickname, he's retired now, his nickname was the Big Fundamental. Mm -hmm. uh, it was Tim Duncan. Tim well, Duncan was a longtime center for the San Antonio Spurs. And, 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 and Tim Duncan didn't do anything spectacular. He didn't have a sky hook like Kareem. Uh, he didn't do the, the, the dunk in your face. Uh, like Patrick Ewing. Well, and, uh, Tim Duncan was just a solid, fundamental player. Mm -hmm. And I can recall uh, back in the day uh, when they were in uh, the uh, uh, when they were in the championship game uh, against uh, the Miami Heat in 2013. It was 2013, and that's the year they had Ray Allen on their team, and Ray Allen shot the lights out and turned out the lights on the San Antonio Spurs, who could taste victory right then and there. Thank that you. was 2013. But you know what the big fundamental did? You know what Tim Duncan did along the rest of the team mm -hmm. and, and the coach? They got together after that loss. And they said, you know what, this hurts. Mm. But you know what, I already see next year. Yeah, yeah. This is messing with us that we're losing right now. But I already see next year that we're going to be champions. And lo and behold, although they lost the year before in 2013, mm -hmm. they made history by getting a victory in 2014. And it was more sweet. Why? Because they had already visualized Thank you, Lord. what they were going to That's right, that's right. Just because... 
you encounter adversity doesn't mean that you can't start to achieve victory. I'm going to say it again. Come Just on. because you encounter adversity doesn't mean you can't achieve victory. Remember, Joseph had a dream, but his dream led him to a pit. Yeah. And that pit led him to a prison. Talk so. But ultimately, he got to the palace. Abraham was told that, that his descendants would span uh, like the stars in the sky and that God had given him a vision that he was going to create unto him a great nation that they would possess the land of promise. He had to hold on to that belief because there were times in which he didn't know if that was going to come true. Mm -hmm. See, name it and claim it is only real based upon what God has already showed you. Come on. See, a lot of people want to say, well, I'm going to name well, it and claim it. Well, if God ain't already showed you that's something, so true. or you have not connected to something by way of the Word, Come on. and the Word has given you the opportunity to visualize it in order to achieve it, then, beloved, I, I don't know how you can achieve what God wants you to have, but you've got to visualize it first in order to get it. But then the second move of this message, in order for you to go get it, is not only have you have to visualize it, but you've got to vocalize. Vocalize. Okay, Caleb saw it, but it took time to get it. And I know somebody's out there frustrated because you see it. You see where you want to go. You see what you want to do. You know what God has told you. You have the power to possess. But how many know that sometimes what you see is far in the distance? Yeah. And sometimes it takes time for you to accomplish that which God has set out for you to do. Mm -hmm. And so when you see it, you see it, but it takes time to get it. So it's not just about seeing it alone. Well. Visualization. But it's also about vocalization. Yeah, yeah, vocalize. See, if you see it, then you have to say, God help me, what you see. Mm -hmm. See, you've got to say exactly what God said over and over again in order to say to yourself, I know what God told me, and it's going to come to pass. I know what God said, and I know it's going to come to pass. Look at verse 9. Verse 9 says, So on that day Moses swore to me, The land on which your feet have walked will be your inheritance, and of that of your children forever, because you have followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. Yeah, yeah. See, every now and again, what you see, you got to turn around and say it. You've got to see. Now what I'm seeing and what I'm saying could have been something that is distant from one another. It's something that happened a long time ago. But the people around me did not necessarily believe it. Have you ever been in that position that the Lord has showed you something? You've heard from God. God has given you the vision. He's given you the blueprint. He showed you the plan. And you shared it with other people because you started talking about it. But everybody that you shared it with don't necessarily share your opinion about it. Come on. They don't necessarily share your convictions. Wow. They don't necessarily share your beliefs that this can happen. They just don't believe it. Mm -hmm. they, it's just like going back in the angles of history when Joshua and Caleb, I just preached this about a week ago, amen, I think it was a week ago, talking about Joshua and Caleb and the fact that but they were the only two to come back with the report that we can do this. We can go into the land and possess all that God says to possess. But remember, there were 12 spies that went. Mm -hmm. Two of them, Joshua and Caleb, believed. Come on. But the rest of them did not believe. Two people who were visionaries versus a bunch of people who were non-believers. That's why when you speak the word, you have to remind yourself of what God said, even in the face of nature. Come on now, say that See, thing. Lest you forget it, while you were in the wilderness wandering with people, that, 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 that sometimes you surround yourself so much 
with people who are unbelievers in what God has shown you and what God has shared with you that you start to doubt whether it's going to come to pass. Come on now. And listen, God is telling me to say, sharing, wanting me to share this with you. I'm getting tough time here. He wants me to share this with you that if he's given you the ability to accomplish some things, then God's going to help you to get an accelerated moment toward where God wants you to be. In other words, beloved, there are going to be people around you that don't believe in what God has shared with you. There are going to be people around you that don't necessarily believe in what God says. But you got to learn to remind yourself Come on, now. on what God said. And that's what Caleb does. He goes to Joshua and he starts talking about what he knew that Moses shared about his apportionment and Come about on. the land that he was supposed to have. So stop surrounding yourself with unbelievers. Stop surrounding yourself with naysayers. Stop surrounding yourself with doubters. Stop surrounding yourself with people that say you can't when God says you can. Come on. In fact, my mama told me a long time ago, uh, stop saying can't because you're giving can't credit. Can't never did anything for you. Yeah, yeah. So why are you giving can't credit? Amen. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know about you, but I'm not get, using can't in my vocabulary anymore. I'm saying what God can do in my life. Yeah, yeah. And God is able to make it through. I'm sitting here and I'm looking at my son as he's listening to this sermon. Amen. <laughs> and my son is a testimony to what God can do when people Show say enough. that it can be done. That's right. There were people in the fourth grade that said that my son would not go to college. Mm -hmm. There were people that said all throughout his time in school that he would have too many challenges and difficulties to navigate to be able to go to a Devil is alive. college, a prestigious college. Hey! And here it is. I'm about to shout, y'all. Here it is. He just completed his first year Hallelujah. at North Carolina A&T State University. Show now. Don't you tell me. Show now. Ah, what God can Lord. do. God is Thank able you, Lord. to do exceedingly abundantly. Yes, sir. Oh, we can ask or think. Never set limits on yourself. My God. Whatever God says is possible. Whatever God says you can do. Whatever God has put your hand to accomplish, he'll help accelerate you to the place where it can be yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can be done. You just got to go get it. You got to go get it. Here it is. I got to move. So there's power in the spoken word. Caleb knew what he was supposed to have. Joshua gives confirmation of God's affirmation for what Moses had said he was supposed to have. Mm -hmm. You see, there's power in the spoken word when you call it to be. Because what you call to be shall be. Yes, That's sir. why you got to be careful what you say with the words that you're given out of your mouth. You got to mm -hmm. be careful what you say. If you keep saying something long enough, whether in the negative right, right. or in the positive, whether you keep saying something long enough, then there is no choice for what is negative or what is positive to come to pass. Yeah, yeah. You got to make the choice if you're going to go get it that I'm going to start speaking life to my situation. That's right. I'm speak going life. to start speaking positive That's about right. my speak situation. Life. I'm going Hallelujah. to start saying negative things because if you start saying negative things Come longer, on. you'll start to believe in the negativity. Yeah, yeah. If you really want it to come to pass and if you really want to go get it, you've got to believe that God has given it to you. Here Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Here it is, Caleb speaks this, watch it, not just for himself, mm -hmm. but Caleb speaks these words to Joshua as a reminder of a generation that shall come after him. Mm -hmm. A generation that shall come after him. Bible says that Judah, the tribe of praise, Judah is the tribe of praise, and they have no possession. They have no land. Verse 6 lets us know here, look at it. Now the people of Judah approached Joshua at Gilgal, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh the Kenzite, said to him, You know what the Lord said to Moses, 
the man of God, and Kadesh, Kadesh Barnea about you and me. Here it is. It first started with the people that were coming to Joshua because they had no apportionment of land. Well, but watch what God does. He'll give voice mm -hmm. to the voiceless. Yeah, yeah. I love this. When, when you can't speak for yourself mm -hmm. and when you can't advocate for yourself, God will send a spokesperson Come on. to speak on your behalf as you're accelerating toward getting what God wants you to have. Yeah, yeah. See, this delegation of the tribe of Judah wanted to get their apportionment of land, but it's Caleb who spoke this not just for himself, for himself, but he also spoke this for the tribe of the people. Mm -hmm. See, also, beloved, God may be using you to not only speak on your behalf what God has shown you, mm -hmm. but to help elevate and accelerate somebody else's dreams and somebody else's desires and somebody else's promise. When maybe God's going to use you to be able to speak Words to those who are voiceless. Yes, yes, See, yes. Beloved, who is speaking on your behalf? Mm -hmm. If you can't say it yourself, who is willing to stand up on your behalf? When when you speak, what you say ought to change the situation so much so that a generation yet to be born is already about to be blessed. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to say that again. When you speak, Yes, Lord. And you speak in the positive and the affirmative on your way to get it, what God says you can mm, possess. Thank the you, Lord. The words that you speak ought to be so great that the reverberation of those words will go throughout all the generations. Thank you, Lord. And Hallelujah. Babies that are yet to be born. Yes, sir. Will be blessed by what you say. Thank you, God. The Bible says He speaks for those who are yet to be born. He speaks mm. to those who are the unnamed. You see, if the word is, is in the, the name of somebody that is known, then when you speak, not only is that person speaking on their behalf, but that person is speaking for those who are unnamed. Those who could not go. Those that would never know the individuals in your family who have turned around and prayed for the day that one of their family members might accomplish something great. Mm -hmm. Somebody will never know the name of the person in your family that stood by and helped you in time of need when you were struggling just to make it on your own. Well, Everybody will see them, but nobody will necessarily see the people mm -hmm. that are behind you, the, the engine that keeps your motor running, the people that pray for you. You mm -hmm. see, when you speak, you speak for the unnamed. Yeah. Because when you talk, things can happen. Come on. When you talk, things can take place. I know the Miranda Law says that you have a right to remain silent. And anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. And you have a light right to get an attorney and all that. I know that's what the Miranda law says that you have a right to remain silent. But in the kingdom of God, you do not have a right well, say to so. remain silent. I wish there was a close-up on well, that. No. You do not have a right to remain silent. No, You've sir. got to open up your mouth and speak for the voiceless. You've got to open up your mouth and speak for the unborn. You've got to open up your mouth and speak for those who are the yeah. unnamed. If you really want your stuff, you got to open your mouth. Because guess what? Closed mouths don't get fed. Well... <laughs> I just said something major. Yeah, yeah, know. yeah. Closed mouths don't get fed. But it's only when you open up your mouth mm -hmm. that you're given the ability to get what God wants you to have. See, if you want your stuff, you got to open up your open up your mouth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't have time for this illustration. I'm going to tell you about uh, the the uh, artificial intelligence of our day and how it speaks, you know, there, I'll just say a little bit of it, amen. There, there are things now in our houses that control the doors that lock, that control the temperature in the room. You can now speak and the lights will dim. Yep. You can speak and the TV will change channels. I wish, yep. Lord, I wish I had that in the 1980s. <laughs> Instead of running back and forth to the 
TV with the pliers. Y'all don't know nothing about that. After the knob that fell off. Speak so. The channels for my Testify. Head. Amen. <laughs> but nowadays, based upon the voice activation system and artificial intelligence that are now in our houses, we can now change the temperature in the room. We can adjust the lighting. We can unlock and lock doors. Guess what? If that can happen with automation, well, God can use your power on. to be a factor ah. to help somebody yeah, yeah. see the light. I got to move. With God, you can change the conditions. With God, you can change what you hear. With God, you can change your direction. But here's the last thing. Not only is it important to visualize, not only is it important to vocalize, mm -hmm. but then the last thing, beloved, is there must be some actualization. Actualization. I'm going to define that. Amen. Actualization. actualization. You can still go get it, but it's got to be actualized. It's in verses 11 and 12. Look at it. Keep your Bibles open. Here it is. It says, I'm still, God oh, help me, mm -hmm. as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I'm just as vigorous to go out to battle now as I was then. Mm -hmm. Now give me this hill country that the Lord promised me that day. You yourself heard then that the Anakites were there and their cities were large and fortified. But the Lord helping me, God help me, I wish I had time. Yeah. will drive them out just as he said. Uh -huh. See, this is all about actualization. Actualization. Well, what does that mean, Pastor Jones? Well, if you're going to actualize something, uh, that means you've not only got to realize through vision and, mm -hmm. and, and, and realize through vocals, but you've got to also actualize. You've got to actually see yourself and, and recognize that God has given you the strength mm -hmm. to be able to accomplish whatever God has set out for you to do. Thank you. That means if you need training, God will give you the time to train in order to make the goal. Yeah, yeah. See, see it was 45 years, 45 years since the day that Moses spoke the words to Caleb that he would possess this land. He All is right. now 85 years old. Well. But maybe that 45 years of training is what he needed in the wilderness. My God. In order to be able to possess and have strength enough to handle his enemies behind enemy lines. Amen. Mm -hmm. Maybe the seven years in Canaan was to prepare you for what God has for you. Mm -hmm. Maybe he needed a mentor during his wilderness soldier, like Moses, who showed up to give him what he needed in order that he might be able to handle it on that day. Because sometimes, beloved, what God gives us by way of vision and what God speaks to us, God knows we're not ready for yeah, it. Yeah, so yeah. we need somebody that can counsel us and mentor my us God, to help God. us prepare for what we're about to have. Uh huh. And then maybe, just maybe during these years, he needed to do some work. After 85 years, he says, I'm still alive. I'm just as strong as 85 Thank as I Lord. was at Thank 40. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, I'm Lord. I'm just as strong. Why? He had strength to work. And see, you got strength to get up in the morning. If you got strength to put one foot out of the bed and put another foot out of the bed. If you got strength to dress yourself, and yeah, if you yeah. got strength to eat your cook your own meal and eat your own food, then God has given you strength to do work. And that's why He can say in the positive, "Give me this much." Yeah, yeah. I'm coming to get what God wanted me to have. Thank Give you. me my apportionment, God wouldn't let him die until he made good on his promise. Yeah, God. See, that's why I can tell somebody out there that the actualization is coming. It is actually on the way. Uh, God just needed you to do some training. God just needed you to get a mentor. God just needed you to do some work. It's on the way. It's on the way. Get ready to possess your mountain. I'm, I'm almost out of time. Let, let me give this one illustration and, and then I'm done. This one illustration, and then I'm done. Uh, Chinese bamboo mm -hmm. uh, is the strongest bamboo known to man. Uh, but for four and a half years, well, Chinese bamboo grows the strongest when it's underground. Well, doesn't peak its head 
It does not rise above the earth, and it takes four and a half years before it peaks through the surface, mm. before it springs up and grows. And when it grows, it grows to be a hundred feet tall. It's the strongest bamboo in the world, Chinese bamboo. But it stays four and a half years mm -hmm. underground, mm -hmm. being developed and being nourished and being grown, grown, and groomed. And it grows when it peaks on the ground. A hundred feet high. Y'all look it up when you get a chance. See, although it might not be happening as fast as you want, and although things might not be taking place as quick as you want, mm -hmm. take time to grow. Take time to develop. Take time to accomplish some things in your life. And when the season is right, when the and when the right. time is right, yeah, God. God will accelerate you to grow up a hundred feet high to accomplish and get whatever God wants you to have. I don't know who this message is for, but God says you're about to be on the rise. Yeah, yeah. In fact, nudge somebody near you if somebody is near you mm -hmm. and tell them I'm about to blow up. Amen. Yeah, yeah. I'm about to blow up. I've been in the blow incubator. Up. Uh, too long, God's about to blow me up. I've been in the position I've been in long enough, and God's about to take me somewhere. I've been faithful. I've been working. I've been struggling and straining. I've been training. I've been listening. Yeah, I've been yeah. doing the things that I need to do. And God has given me the strength to make it through. I want Thank to you, encourage God. somebody today that you can still go get it. Go get it. God has it. Thank for you, it. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God has it for you to possess. You being underground for so long does not mean that God is not going to see you through. God still gave you the strength because He will not let you go until you receive the promise. Mm. Let's pray, beloved. I got to move. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for this message. This, this, this message was as much for me as it is for those who are listening. And I pray, Lord God, that you help us to, to, to be able to visualize it in order to achieve it. Mm -hmm. Help us to, sometimes we got to vocalize it, Lord God. We're going to speak to ourselves, and then when we speak to ourselves, we got to speak on behalf of others who are the unnamed, who are the unborn, who are the voiceless. Help us to speak on others' behalf and allow our voice to rise, Lord God, to the place we know that we can get what you want us to have. And then finally, God, help us to actualize. Mm -hmm. Help it to come to pass. Help us, Lord God, in this time. And let us know that all this time is not for naught. All these years were not wasted. Mm -hmm. All this time was just time to prepare us and get us ready for what you're about to do in our lives. And so, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you give us the strength like Caleb mm. to go get it. Give us the strength like Caleb that if there's any enemies in my possession, we're going to kick them out and evict them in the name of Jesus. If there's anyone that's standing in the way between me and my promise, God, give me the strength mm. to be able to achieve it and receive it for myself. God, we thank you for all of those who are on the rise, those that are about to blow up in Jesus' name. And bless us now and keep us Till we come together again as a family of faith. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank God. God bless Amen. you, beloved. Amen. Have a smile upon you. We are thankful to God for all that God continues to do in your lives. Y'all be blessed. And I hope this blessed message has blessed you as well. Amen.